today's event was a, so a tea and a meet and greet with myself uh, and uh, a few people who came out to, uh, to support and to um, find out a little bit more about myself and, my, and the platform that I'm standing on and my run for the Liberal nomination. So we're here at the Nightingale House in Ingleside and we had a, we had a nice, uh, nice turnout. I've uh, got an overwhelming amount of support from people in Cornwall and in the, in the counties as well. Uh, it's, been, it, it's been interesting because there's only 2% of Canadians that want to join and be part of a, a party. And so right now I'm in membership mode where I have to sell memberships for enable, for enable them to be able to vote for me on April 5th for the nomination meeting. So it's been a real, <clears throat> real eye-opener for me, trying to get people to actually, uh, it's not the $10 to sign up, it's the actually signing to be part of a party. So I think as, as a nominee, I mean, I, I, I'm well known in the community. I know a lot of people in Cornwall and in the, in the counties. Um, but I think I, I bring a background that's maybe, uh, you know, I have more, a little bit more creative ideas. So a lot of the, I've been asking people as feedback is why they're supporting me. Uh, a number of people think that, I, you know, I bring a creative element to the table that, uh, that others wouldn't. Um, I bring a business uh, knowledge that a lot of other people, you know, don't have. Um, I've worked out, I mean, in the past, my, my job has been to create relationships with people and I think that's what this job, the job of an MPP needs to be is to create the relationships both in the riding and then as well as in Queen's Park to get things done for the riding. And my goal is really to be a voice for the community because I don't think we've, you know, for the past four years I don't believe we've had a voice at, at Queen's Park and we really need to have that. We, I think we've missed that since Jim Brunel has been gone uh, as, the, as the MPP. If you don't vote, if you don't sign up, and you're, you don't cast that vote, then you really, you give away uh, your right, you know, in, in a sense to, you know, you can't complain, but also you, you, you're not helping steer the direction of either your municipality, of your riding, or of the country. I think is, you know, when you look at unions as, as unionized uh, employees, and being members of unions, you've got, you're part of a system that, that helps you, that helps you grow as, as an employee in, in wherever, you are, wherever you are that you work. I always give the example of uh, nurses and hospitals. So you, you, know, you pay into a union, that union then helps you get training and helps you advance your nursing career, same as teachers. So I think you, you know, as a union member, you really need to get out, you really need to learn the policies of the party that you're going to vote for and the person that you're going to vote for because if the person you're going to vote for is against unions and looking to abolish unions, then that's going to have a, a huge impact on, on your life. And so I think, you know, again, the right to vote is an incredible, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's an incredible opportunity to get your message out and to vote for the person who's going to get your message out and look after you. Education is, is a huge, right? Education is the foundation and we really need to, um, we really need to continue to put uh, investment into education because it's the future really. Um, I look at, I mean I'd love to see a university in our region. I think it would be huge for our region and that's one of the things that I know there's a group working at it right now. There's, there's been talk about it for years. I think we really need to, to raise our voice as a, as a riding and let it be known that it's something that we really want. Um, I, I look at the government that we have in place right now, they've invested a lot of money into education. Even some of the changes when you look at like the full day kindergarten program, that's an investment in education, but it's an investment that saves the average taxpayer, I think it's around $6,500 you know, a year is what the average out, out is for, for daycare because now you're not having to pay daycare. You've got, you know, kindergarten students that are in all day in two schools. When you look around the world at what's happening in so many other places around the world, you really need to look at, you know, extending uh, the work and the, and the effort that we put into ensuring, you know, human rights right here in our community because we as Canadians, we as Ontarians, we need to put the, these things first. That first is human rights, second is education, in my, in my opinion. A lot of people from age, you know, even 16, 14 up to, to 30, you know, I, I'm, it's almost an apathy for some of them, to, you know, whereas other groups, depending on how they were raised and, and their background, 
they put a big emphasis on on voting. I think we need to put that emphasis on them, and we need to help educate uh, young people and work with them. You know, I mean, we even when you look at the voting system, I mean, maybe it's archaic now. Maybe going in to sign a ballot isn't the way we should be voting. Maybe there should be. Um, maybe we should look at other ways, you know, to, to allowing, you know, votes to be made to either by proxy or electronically. Maybe. I would encourage everyone to just get out and vote. There's 78,000 people in our riding, give or take. I'd love to see us go to the polls and have, you know, 60,000 voters show up to vote. I'd love to see 78,000, but if we could just get it up, you know, well over half and well into, you know, most of the voters getting out and voting, I'd love to see that because at the end of the day, it's part of the democratic system that we live in and it's it's a beautiful system we need to we need to do it get out there and vote